I want to start with the scripture, 1 Corinthians 5.17. This will be on the screen for you. 1 Corinthians 5.17, the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth and to us today. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become what? A new person. So the old life is gone. And come on, preach this with me. A new life has begun. New life has begun. This is what prompts our we believe statement that's in the hallway um, that says we believe growing people change. Growing people change. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Notice the word begun. It has started, which means it will continue. And by the way, Jesus, the author of our faith, is the one who is faithful to complete that work. He's the one that does it, okay? Not you. The Holy Spirit partners with you, and new life has begun through what he's done. So we believe growing people change. Now, a lot of us long for change in our lives in different times, in different seasons, in different stages, right? Sometimes we want to change because there's a bad habit that we want to stop. You know, you're like, I just can't eat any more of my fingernails. Like, that's it. You know, I'm done with that. Um, sometimes you want a good habit to start. Man, I would love to just wake up earlier and fill in the blank, whatever it might be. Or sometimes we want change in our body. We want change in our attitude sometimes. Sometimes we want other people to have an attitude adjustment, right? Maybe we want a change in our environment, a change in our work, a change in our home, a change in a relationship. We want it to get better. We desire for change. It seems that we are designed as people for better quality. Like, that's what we want. We want to improve the quality of something. Now, I have a disease called, I want to fix it. (laughs) Anybody else? Yeah, Rich is like, yeah, okay. The reason I call it a disease is because sometimes it's not broken. (laughs) But there's something about me that goes, I've got to improve this. I've got to make it better. I've got to improve this. That's a great plan, but how about this plan? You know, and it's like, just leave it alone. But there's this desire in us to want to improve things. And I really feel like God gives us that as a desire. He gives us this desire to want to see things continue to move in a forward direction. And if we want to see quality increase, most of the time change is required. Some kind of change, right? For example, if I want to improve my body and health, then I have to change my diet and exercise. Most of us would want to improve our relationship with God. We would say, I want a, a transformation in my spiritual walk. Most of us would say, yes. Raise our hand to that. To improve our understanding of God's word, to have an effective prayer life, to have a bold witness for Jesus, like that's what I want. We desire to be made new in Christ Jesus. We all lift our hands saying, yes, I want to be what that verse says. I want to be made new. I want to do the work that God has in my life. Now, we would call this spiritual transformation. I'm going to use that word, or spiritual growth. But here's the thing about spiritual transformation or spiritual growth. It's not becoming a better version of yourself. It's not like, well, I want to become Rex (laughs) 2.0, right? I'm going to be smarter, holier, holier, stronger, funnier, I'm going to pray longer, and I'm going to memorize, I'm going to quote more verses and have better looking hair. I should use the word fuller, shouldn't I? Rex 2.0, spiritual transformation, da-da-da, you know. But it's not, spiritual transformation is not an exterior change. It's not a, a behavior modification. Look at this uh, line with me. You could call it a quote. You could just call it a comment. Spiritual growth is what? It's a process of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And so if I'm being made new, I'm being made into the image of Christ. When you take the step of saying yes to Jesus and you believe in who Jesus is and what he's done to follow him, that's salvation. You have come to a moment of salvation. New life has begun, but that means that this salvation is carried out day after day after day, which means the old life is gone, the new life has become. Yes, change is required, but salvation is not just about the exterior change, although it will be there. 
Salvation is about being in right relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's in right relationship with Him. That's the context of spiritual growth, is I am made right in the inside of God because of what Jesus has done. And then we let Him change us. Because you can't just change things on the outside and go, oh, I'm in right relationship with God because I'm doing all the right things. No, we, gotta, we have to back that up and say, it's because I'm in Jesus Christ. I'm made right before Him, and then watch how Christ and His Holy Spirit does the work in me. So yes, I will do different things. There will be change in my life and yours as we follow Jesus, as we learn on what that growth is. There will be change. Like there will be exterior things that will be modified. But you can't change behavior until you change the way you think. Because that's where true transformation begins. It begins internally before it comes externally. You can't behave differently unless you're thinking differently. Let me put it to you this way. It's like the difference between driving a rental car and driving a car that you paid cash for and that belongs to you, okay? You will drive those cars differently. You will. If it's your car, you're going to be a little bit more careful around the turns. You're going to be thinking about the tires that you may have to replace someday. So you're probably not going to, you know, burn out as often, just every once in a while to show off. You're going to make sure you vacuum that vehicle. You're going to make sure that every, every um, cup that has a lid on it in that vehicle, you're going to take care of it. You're going to wash it. You're going to, when you drive, you're going to drive it considering that you want to keep this vehicle as long as you can. But if you're driving a rental car, things change. I may do be a little heavy on the accelerator around that corner, you know. I may not care if something spills. Why? Because it's not mine. And so you're going to drive it differently. You're going to behave differently because in your mind you go, well, it's not mine. I don't care as much because it's not mine. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to treat a rental car, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying like there's this process in our brains that's different. And when we talk about spiritual development, we talk about spiritual transformation, spiritual growth, if we just focus on behavior and external and doing the right things, we're going to miss it because the transformation that happens is within us first. We have to think differently. At the root of it, sometimes we miss the valuable thought of, I am a child of God. God knows this. God chose you. God calls you. God adopts you. God calls you a child of his. And so you are in the family of God. He is our heavenly father. But we sometimes don't think that way. We think, well, what should I act like? What should I do differently? But if you can think in context of like, I am a child of God, therefore, he's my heavenly father, and so that changes everything. Man, God's going to take care of my needs because that's what a good heavenly father does. And, and the Lord is going to guide me in the right path because that's what a father does. He's going to teach me the things that will help me in the long run because that's what a father does. What I want us to do this this week and next Sunday, is think differently. Because if we say that growing people change, I hope that the change we're, not, we're doing isn't just external things that, that, oh, this is what a Christian should look like. This is how a Christian should act. But no, it's because this is who I am in Christ. And I understand and I'm thinking about this differently. God desires to help you know and understand who you are as a child of God, and that begins within us first, in our heart and our mind. And he does a transforming work within your mind before he changes the behaviors that come flowing out of that. And uh, next week, I want to look very specifically at the changes that God wants to do within our minds, the things, how we see ourselves in context to who he is and what he's done. But today, I want to equip you with a superpower. Okay, that's it. The superpower of change in your life. And it's from the Apostle Paul's words. Now, this is probably more of an encouragement than it is a teaching, but I want to give you something that I hope stays with you 
in your faith with Jesus. And I want us to look at Galatians, the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. Galatians chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 16. I underline a few key things that I want you to pick up on. He says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now right away, we're like, yeah, sign me up, right? I want to be a new person, so I want to walk by the Spirit, and I won't gratify the desires of the flesh. I desire not to do those things anymore. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what's contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious. And he goes and names them for us, even though they're obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, fractions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace, forbearance, it's kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against these things, there's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. So Paul is urging the believers to see that there is a difference between one who is allowing Christ to transform them from the inside out And those whose life is aimlessly wandering and letting the enemy take control of their lives. He says it's very obvious, and he names them. I mean, the fruits of the Spirit versus the acts of the sinful nature are very obvious in contrast. And so he's saying, obviously, this is what you're to walk in. Obviously, this is what should be a product of your faith in Jesus. That's obvious. But then what he helps us and encourages us with is, how do we make that happen? He says in verse 16, I'm going to go back to the first verse we started with. He says, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul could have used a lot of verbs here. He could have. I mean, you know, the dictionary is wide open in front of him, so to speak, right? He could have used anyone. Walk by the Spirit. He uses the word walk. That's really what I want to focus in on today. He doesn't say stand in the Spirit. He doesn't say lay down in the Spirit. He doesn't say just chill out in the Spirit. He doesn't say sit down in the Spirit. He says what word? Walk. An active word on our part to partner with the work that the Holy Spirit is doing to produce what the Spirit is desires to produce in your life and mine. Walk. Walk. See, transformation, spiritual transformation, the work that God does, is not a one-time activity. It's not even a once-a-week activity. You know, this is great. We come to church. We, we get to hang out together. We see each other. We get to know new people. We get to worship an amazing and awesome God through song. We get to give of our tithes as an act of worship. We get to encourage other people. We get to pray with other people. This is great. But this stand alone is not just walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, to me at least, is telling me that I have this continuous, ongoing relationship with the Lord where I walk in step with Him and I keep on walking in step with Him. And I'm not just going to stand in one spot. And just say, Lord, you bring it. And, and if it doesn't show up right here, right now, well, that's it. Or, or maybe I gave my life to Jesus Christ at Pursuit Church of the Nazarene on a Sunday. It was after the sermon, and I said yes to him. I raised my hand and committed my life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. But it doesn't stop there. We are to continue that relationship, walk by the Spirit. That's what transformation is about. 
We have to learn to walk in the Spirit. That's, that's our part. We've got to learn how to do that. And when we trip up and fall, we've got to learn to get up and keep walking. You guys know what it's like. Many of you have seen or even trained a young child or baby to walk. It's, the, it's, it's so fun, right? It's so fun to watch. It's funny, too, if we're just honest about it, right? Because sometimes babies can be a little top-heavy, you know, because they are, you know what I mean? They're like, whoa. It's like they're learning to walk. It's so fun. And they just, they fall down on, on, their, on their little bums, and they get back, you know, you pick them back up, and, and you give them something to stand on, and then you stand back, and what does mom and dad do? Come on. Come on. I wish you would do me. Come on. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> However you talk to them. It's, isn't it, but a side note, isn't it funny when we talk to puppies and babies that our voices go up? <laughs> anyway, just a little side note there, but especially babies. And so mom and dad, they, they stand them up and they stand back and they come on, come on, you can do it, come on, walk, keep walking, and they'll take a step and then they'll fall, and what happens? What, what do we do? We get them back up and we go, come on, keep going. Keep going. It wasn't like if they took one step and they fell, they were like, oh, well, there goes that, you know. Good luck down there the rest of your life. No. We pick them up and we help them move forward because they will learn to walk. And then when they learn to walk and then they learn to get into things, you're like, why did we teach them to do that? <laughs> what were we thinking, right? And then they outrun you and you're just like, oh, great. Now we're, how are we going to catch them? Don't give up. In this journey of faith, I honestly believe that God keeps calling us. And what happens is we get discouraged when we fall. We get discouraged when we doubt something, where a doubt will come in and we go, is that for real? And we just go, I don't know. I think I'm just checking out. Can I just encourage you to keep walking? God's calling you to keep walking. You may trip and fall and, and make a mistake, Get up, keep walking. You may fall into an old habit after you gave your life to Jesus Christ, and you're like, well, maybe nothing's changed. No, 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 no. That's a lie. God is at work, so get up and keep walking. You may compare yourself. This is really dangerous. I do it all the time. You might compare yourself to somebody else's journey. Oh, man, look at how successful they are as a Christian. Look at all the things they know and all the things they do. And look at it, you know, and you start comparing. You're like, well, I'm never going to reach. Man, you do not compare. Because what happens? We just want to be like, uh, no. Keep walking. Keep walking. Because progress is greater than perfection. God calls us to keep on walking Keep walking by the Spirit of God. Now, how do you know that you're growing? If you're like, well, I'm just walking, how do I know? Because you'll see changes. You'll see things that God is asking you to respond differently to. As you, you get up and you, you, you fall and you get back up and you're like, I just learned something. I just learned a tactic of the enemy and how he wants to tempt me. Or I just learned something about myself and how I behave around other people. Lord, would you do a work in me and help me as I keep on walking? And Paul points out here the difference, right? The, the, uh, sin is, the sinful life is obvious, and he names them. It's the desires of the flesh that lead to destruction. Every one of these things, they all lead to destruction. They promise good right at the, at the, at the onset, like, ooh, that looks good, that looks shiny, let me chase after that. But there's destruction that follows every single time. But what we want as believers in Jesus, if you're following after him, you want the fruit of the Spirit in your life, right? Those are the words we want to see active. In fact, I would say that you don't have to be a Christian to say, I want those words in my life, because that's good. Like, those are good things. But the acts of the sin, they're tied to what we do outside of the will of God. They're tied to the desires of the flesh. I don't know if you noticed, picked up those words, but Paul is saying, hey, these things, the roots are from the desire of your flesh. So in other words, if you on your own try to do what you want to do, guess what's going to happen? The desire of the flesh will lead to these things. But if you want the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit is tied to the tree. The reason it's a fruit is because if it's an apple 
It's because it's on an apple tree. And just list any fruit, and they come from that tree or plant. They're tied to it. So if we want to have, and I love the analogy here of the fruits of the Spirit, because it really gives us something to like, yeah, that makes sense. If I want to be a loving person, then I have to be connected to the tree of love. Now you're like, where's that one planted? (laughs) It's Jesus. If I want to be patient, then I need to go be planted to the tree of patience. Well, who's that? Well, that's Jesus. And if if I want to practice self-control, then I need to be connected and I need to be part of the tree of self-control. Who's that? Well, that's Jesus. And so it's this walking in step with him that we learn to be connected because the fruit on its own doesn't say, oh, I want to be fruitier. And they, it's not motivation. It's not the willpower of the, of the, you know, the banana to be like just more yellow. I'm going to be more yellow today. I'm going to be the yellowest banana on that shelf. Oh, just look at me. I'm going I'm to do this. You know, and it's not an orange that says, you know what? I'm just going to grow bigger and plumpier, and I'm going to be, the, when they peel me open, I mean, it's just, orange juice is just, it's going to be a sun-kissed factory everywhere. It's not willpower alone that allows that. It's because the fruit is connected to the tree. The fruit is delicious and juicy and full of color because it is connected to the tree. All right, enough of that illustration. The change in us will only happen when we are tied to the tree of life. It's not by our own willpower. It's not by our own sufficiency, our own strength, our own skill set. It's by being connected. That's why it's so important when Paul's like, you need to be walking by the Spirit. Stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to the tree. That way you can receive the fruit of the Spirit. Are you tied to the tree of life? Are you daily surrendering your life to Jesus? Are you saying, Lord, today is going to be crazy. (laughs) And there's a lot of things that I'm stressed out about, but Lord, I surrender to you. I want to trust you today. Lord, I desire to worship you. Even though it just seems like there's no end to this chaos, I know that you're still there, and I'm going to worship you. Lord, I'm going to talk to you. Even though I've messed up in my past, that doesn't mean that you're not listening to me today. I'm going to talk to you. Or how about, Lord, I want to listen to you. Lord, I want to obey you. I want to honor you. I want to love you. I want to be staying connected to you. Can I encourage you to keep on walking? Don't give up. That's what it looks like to keep on walking. I like another analogy that Paul uses to help us see how the living continually in God's Spirit will change the way we walk. Uh, Now, this one's out of Ephesians 5.18. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. He says this, Don't get drunk with wine, for that is a reckless living, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, go with me to the imagery that Paul gives us, okay? I want you to picture somebody in your mind that's drunk. Just go ahead and do that. Now, um, this can be somebody before Christ, B.C., or somebody recently you saw, but here's what happens, right? They, they stagger when they walk, right? They, they have a hard time focusing, and so there's a lot of this going on. There's a lot of, there's not any, any it's like the ground's always moving, and they're just trying to keep up. Now, why? Because their walking is affected and being controlled and hijacked by the effects of alcohol in their mind. So the influence of alcohol in their mind is controlling the way, giving them the inability to actually walk a straight line. Paul uses this imagery when he's talking to us because not only is he saying, hey, be careful with that, but he, right afterwards, what does he say? But be filled with the Spirit. So Paul urges us instead to be filled with God's Spirit. So if we let God, His Spirit, control our minds, if he, if he helps change the way we think, it will inevitably change the way we walk. 
So Lord, would you influence me so that I can walk in a way that honors you? But if I try to do this on my own, I think this is how I should respond as a Christian. I think this is how I should act. I think this is, I think, I think. Lord, what do you think? I want to walk in step with you so that I can operate, react, walk, behave, talk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So my encouragement to you is keep walking in step with the Spirit so that you can produce what the Spirit wants to produce in your life. Romans 12.2, this is the last scripture I want to give you today. Paul again, the church in Rome, he says this, hey guys, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person. Now you could put the word how? By changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. See, Paul knows what we all want, and we want to know God's will. How many of you prayed that before? God, I just want to know your will for this. Or would you guide me? Would you direct me? And so the only way that's possible is if we let the Lord change the way we think so that we can be transformed into that new person that we are in Christ. So again, today I told you it was more of an encouragement. And the encouragement is to keep walking. Keep walking in step. Don't give up. Whatever the Lord is doing in your life, revealing to you, keep moving in that direction. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've never said yes to him before, then you can take a step towards him. You can say yes to him by believing in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you, he rose again on the third day, and that we have new life in Jesus. You can say, yes, I want to follow you, and salvation is yours today. And then you keep walking. And we're going to give you a chance at the end of our service to come know Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you want to make that step today. But first, I have a prayer for the believer. I have a prayer for those of you that desire to keep in step with the Spirit, that you're like, yeah, I want to keep walking. And yeah, I've, I've fallen, I've tripped, I've doubted, I've had fear, I've compared, but I want to encourage you. This is my prayer that I wrote for you and for me. It simply says this, Dear Lord, I want to know your will for me. I desire to be made new in and through you. I put my life in your hands, Lord. I desire that you make the changes that you want to make in my life. So Lord, begin in my mind. Transform my mind from your way of thinking, from my way of thinking to your way of thinking. In your name, Jesus. The Lord hears those prayers. And I just want to encourage you to keep walking. We're going to take time to, uh, to pray for those that maybe want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And just to focus our hearts and minds, I ask just everyone just bow your heads. And if you want to say yes to Jesus today and you want to follow after him, you know that today is a day of salvation for you. Here's the greatest news ever is that when we call on the name of the Lord, he's there and we're saved. And so if you want to say yes to Jesus today and follow after him, we want to pray with you. But if that's you, just put your hand up and saying, Rex, I want to ask Jesus in my life today. I want to pray that prayer. Is there anybody here that wants to pray that? And we'll pray with you. Just put your hand up so I know who I'm praying with. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Now, I know I can't see everybody in overflow, but if you're there in overflow, I want us to pray as a church family for those that are making this commitment together. Can we do that? So just repeat this prayer. From your hearts, Pursuit Church, let's pray this together. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for today. Thank you for your love for me and your great plan for me for new life. So I admit that I've sinned. Forgive me, Lord. I desire to follow you and walk in step with you. Thank you for salvation today. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Can we give God praise right now? (laughs) Amen. If you gave your life to Jesus today, it's not over yet. You have one other step. You need to tell somebody. 
Tell somebody you came with. Tell somebody the prayer team will be up here in just a minute. Come talk to me and, uh, and say, hey, I gave my life to Jesus today. Just say it. Just confess that out and watch what God is going to do. And we want to um, help you and encourage you in that new faith in Jesus, that we will keep walking. If you don't have a Bible, we have a new believer's Bible we'd like to get in your hands. Um, I know that I think Clarice is going to be at the next step table. She can talk with you about that as well. I can. Um, but if you have a prayer need, we'd love to be able to pray for you as well. And so before we finish, I'm going to invite the prayer team to come up. And if you have a prayer need in your life, when I dismiss you, please come up and take the opportunity to pray with those that are in the prayer team. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks, guys. You are sent. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's teaching at Pursuit Church. We pray that the teaching today will encourage your faith in Jesus Christ to draw you closer to Him and give you a better understanding of His Word. If there's a way that we can minister to you, pray for you, or encourage you in your faith, please reach out to us on our website, PursuitNazarene.org, and click on Connection Card. Also, you can share this video with others and encourage them. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.